Okay, so this will be our last video on the binomial series. Uh, we came up with the formula last time, so we do get a nice, neat generalization of the usual binomial formula, right, for powers of a binomial. We just have to redefine the binomial coefficients, right, because if alpha is not an integer, a positive integer, then we can't make sense of that numerator as a factorial, okay? But um, if alpha is a positive integer, if it's a natural number, then this is the same as the old binomial formula, right? So we've extended the binomial formula um, to deal with a new situation. Let's just write down the binomial series. Um, now, uh, we could play around with remainder estimates and, and confirm that we do indeed have sort of equality between the, the series and the function. Uh, the remainder estimates get a little bit tricky to work with, partly because we have to, you know, we have to kind of think about the value of alpha here um, depending on the value of alpha and where it lands, is it positive, negative, bigger than one, smaller than one, things like that, um, there are sort of different cases that you need to consider. Um, and some of them can get slightly annoying. So maybe we, we skip over that and we'll just look at what about the radius of convergence, right? So what is the radius of convergence? Let's take a look. Well. We're going to take the absolute value of a n plus 1 over a n, take the limit as n goes to infinity, where, what is our a n? Our a n is going to be alpha choose n, x to the n. So what we get here is the limit n goes to infinity of alpha choose n plus 1 divided by alpha choose n, okay? And actually, we do need to be careful about absolute values here because if alpha is not an integer, right? So if alpha is a positive integer, eventually one of these will be 0, and that's why the series terminates, right? So if you're doing like 1 plus x to the 7th, you get, you know, you, you get these binomial coefficients for... Uh, k equal to 0 up to 7, and beyond that, they're all just equal to 0. So we don't get any additional terms in the series, okay? But if alpha is not a natural number, this keeps on going forever, and eventually these terms become negative. So we do have to watch out for that. There is absolute values to consider there. Um, and of course, we have x to the n plus 1 over x to the n. Those will just cancel, leave us with x, okay? So... Let's uh, expand this out and see what we get, right? Up top, we've got alpha, alpha minus 1, down to alpha minus n plus 1, and then the next one is going to be alpha minus n, right? If I replace n by n plus 1, the plus 1 cancels with that plus 1, okay? Divided by n plus 1 factorial. That whole thing divided by alpha, alpha minus 1, down to alpha minus n plus 1, over, sorry, just n factorial, n factorial, times our x, still taking the absolute value, and... So we do the usual, you know, invert and multiply game, and we can see that a lot of stuff is going to cancel, right? Um, those cancel. Those cancel. All of that cancels. That one sticks around. The n factorial, we can cancel with everything except for that. So we get, in the end, what we get is the limit n going to infinity of alpha minus n over n plus 1 times x. And we have to take the absolute value of that thing. OK, so n's going to infinity. We have minus n over n, right? Alpha is a constant. So this in the limit is just going to go to minus 1. So absolute value of minus x is the same thing as the absolute value of x. So we just get. We get absolute value of x. 
We need that to be less than 1. So that tells me that the radius, the radius of convergence in this case is going to be 1. Um, the question of whether or not you can, can include the endpoints, it very much depends on the value of alpha that you're working with, so depending on the situation. Sometimes, sometimes you include one endpoint or possibly another, uh, but it really depends beyond the scope of this course. We'll leave that part out, okay? Um, now, just to kind of finish off, well, what if we were going to do, what if we wanted to do something like 1 plus x to the 1 half? What does that look like, okay? Well, let me see. 1 plus x to the 1 half should be 1, okay? All right? So the first term here is still going to be just 1, right? It's still 1, okay? 1 plus. So when k is equal to 1, what do you get? When k is equal to 1, you just get alpha, okay? You just get alpha over 1. You get alpha. Alpha in this case is 1 half. So 1 plus 1 half x, okay? What's the next term? So the next term is going to be here, right? It's going to be 1 half times a half minus 1. So a half times a minus 1 half, right? And then divided by 2 factorial. So we get like minus 1 over 8x squared, right? If we wanted to go to the next one, we could, right? Um, alpha minus 2 is going to be minus 3 over 2. So we have minus 3 over 2 times minus a half times a half. So we're at minus 3 over 8. We also have to divide by the 3 factorial, right? So we get uh, minus, actually, double negative. Yep. So we get uh, 3 over 48 x cubed and so on. Okay? So this can be useful if you're trying to approximate a square root. If x is sufficiently close to 0, sometimes this gives you a pretty good approximation. Um, in fact, you know, the, the linear approximation is already pretty good for square roots. You might have remembered doing that when we were doing like differentials right, in Calc 1. Um, linear approximation for square roots gives you actually a pretty good approximation if you're close to a perfect square. So if x is close to 1, you, you get reasonable values. Okay? Um, we could also do things like 1 plus x to the minus 1. Okay? You get uh, 1 minus x, right? You always get the, you know, so the, I guess we should say, I guess we have to kind of specify here that we still set alpha choose 0 by definition to be 1, right? Um, alpha choose 1 is still alpha, right? Alpha choose 2 is alpha times alpha minus 1 over 2, and so on. Um, so you get 1 if alpha is equal to minus 1, and then the next one we get minus 1 times minus 2 over 2. We get plus x squared. Alpha choose 3, you're going to get minus 1 times plus 2 times minus 3. So, and then divide by 3 factorial. Oh, you just get a minus sign again. Um, minus x cubed. Uh, and so on. And oh, actually, that's interesting. You get the sum. So you can work out with a bit of work that what you get here is actually just the sum minus 1 to the n, x to the n. And actually, geometric series formula says that if absolute value of x is less than 1, we can write that, you know, geometric series formula says that's, well, this is minus x to the n. So it's 1 minus minus x and oh. That's exactly where we started, right? So the binomial series formula actually agrees with the geometric series formula in the case where your power is minus 1, which is interesting.